Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd with the best teeth in the game. And it's time for another edition of Let's Argue, where I go online, I accept your hot takes, your unpopular opinions, your tough questions. I respond to the bestest ones literally in this video. That's what we do. Before I get too deep into this Let's Argue, let me give a shout out to our sponsor in this video. Bam! The good people over at The Ridge. They make these nifty, metal, plated wallets that fit nicely in your front pocket. Just stack your cards in this thing. It's sleek, it's awesome. Replace that disgusting old bulky leather wallet today. Hit up that link down below. Use promo code MELON to get 10% off of your order. And uh, yeah, that's it. Ah! If you guys haven't already noticed, this is a specific episode of Let's Argue where we are answering questions and responses in regards to a particular thing. Uh, that is you guys throwing your uh, nominees out there for Album of the Decade. So here are my continued responses to that part two to the first part, which we will link at the end of this video, so you should you should watch that one if you haven't already. Let's go! Flower Boy, its features are great and themes slash topics are more consistent, keeping Tyler still at a balance of the foreground, while stuff like My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, where Kanye seems to take a back seat to a lot of his features. Flower Boy, I, I don't know about that. I mean, Flower Boy is really good, but there are a lot of tracks on the record that I find to be a little too pillowy, faint, a few cuts on the back end that I think are just okay. I think that the ending of the album isn't all that great either. Look, I love the record. I think it's a really good record, but um, Igor is better. 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 Destroyer Kaput. Very calming while still remaining full of substance, packed with memorable moments that keep me wanting to go back. The production is beautiful and transcendent, along with quotes that can be picked apart and appreciated for their genius. Perfectly crafted. Wow. That is a great write-up, my friend. That is a great fucking write-up. And Destroyer Kaput, I love it. It's a great record. And I would happen to agree that um, it, it, it is potentially an album of the decade contender. And I think that's partially due to the fact that he does this whole sophisty pop thing, if you want to call it that, uh, so well, so much better than a lot of other artists putting in on the style. Uh, if not only because he comes off so bold as a vocalist, in these atmospheres over these instrumental backdrops and Dan Behar's poetry, his lyrics are usually pretty on point. It's like watching a really sexy black and white art film. Uh, and it, in, in a way, it's it's really Dan Behar's last fantastic record. He still comes out with some good stuff every once in a while. He still comes out with some good stuff, but it's his last kind of amazing record. So yeah, Kaput, Destroyer. Hell fucking yes. Sunbather, in my opinion, is by far the album of the decade. It brings a wide variety of genres together seamlessly, pulling together melodic blissness, harsh shrieks, and blast beats, and solid walls of sound, plus it has really deep and emotional lyrics addressing real millennial life issues. Honestly, Sunbather is not my album of the decade. I think it is a little too one-dimensional stylistically uh, for it to be that. I mean, I get that there is an interesting cross-section of genres coming together on this record, but I don't think there's enough variation across the entire LP for it to really be uh, one of my favorites of the decade, or rather my favorite of the decade still, though. I, I will say, across this past 10 years of popular music, there have been few records that have been able to achieve uh, so well the same combination of sounds and have it be uh, so gratifying. Black gaze and atmospheric black metal, especially the more American side of the genre, would not be where it is today or would not have had uh, the crest of popularity it did if not for this record. That's certainly worth a nod and again, respect, but it's just not album of the decade material, yeah, in my opinion. Emotion by Carly Rae Jepsen. Not only is it a great album, it influenced tons of pop music artists like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift, among others. This trend of mix of modern and vintage will go on in a few more years as the opposite of PC music in the pop spectrum. Yeah, you do have to give respect to Carly Rae Jepsen and her producers on Emotion for uh, redoing a classic 80s synth pop sound so faithfully and and doing it um, in, in a way that doesn't feel dated, doesn't feel like an exercise in nostalgia. Uh, the, the album sees a return to just really focused, melodic, and 
compelling songwriting in the pop music sphere. Uh, I think that uh, it was a breath of fresh air. I still don't know if I would say it's album of the decade material, as there are other pop records I prefer to it that have dropped over the past 10 years, but I think that Emotion is certainly one of the biggest unsung heroes of pop music in this past decade, for sure. I think personally, Black Star, The Death of David Bowie, was very impactful in this decade, and the album was phenomenal and almost chilling with how close it was to his death. I mean, while I think Black Star is a great record, um, I don't know, I'm not super crazy about your take here, because it mostly just seems to be just about the context surrounding the album's release and David Bowie passing around that time. I mean, the album is great uh, musically, the album has great songwriting on it, uh, some of the best songs of David Bowie's entire career, and uh, while it does deal in death and while it does deal in transitioning to, a, I guess, moving on to another plane of existence, uh, it's, it's the writing and the quality of the writing on those topics that makes it a compelling record. Even if David Bowie had managed to stay alive for five more years past the release of Black Star, it would still be a great record. So while Black Star, yeah, I, I think it's arguable as, as an album of the decade. I think uh, for me personally, it's, it's going to be close. Still, the record has more going for it than David Bowie passing away. Titus Andronicus, The Monitor. The lyrics are outstanding from start to finish. Literally every other line is a quotable one-liner. The songwriting is ambitious, yet focused, and the concept is unique and integrated so cleverly through both the lyrics and the production. <sighs> the Monitor is a record that I like. I like it. Uh, but I just feel like I don't enjoy it as much as I should, considering how amazingly ambitious and lofty the band's goals are on this record. And, and many of those goals achieved. The storytelling, the Civil War narrative, just how deep into history this album goes. There are moments where I wish the production was a lot better, and there are moments where I find the record to be a little too grating. But still, despite not being the biggest fan of this project, I, I still do have all the respect in the world for Titus Andronicus and, and what they achieved on this one. I will say Flume's self-titled album. It not only defined the soundscape for electronic music for years to come, but also hip-hop. I would say what Daft Punk's discovery did for pop music and set a standard, a standard for the two biggest genres this decade. Maybe it's because I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan of the record, but I fail to see the, the gigantic and long-lasting influence of, of that LP. For the most part, I see it as being like a little derivative of a handful of things, though I do love the fact that it, that it brings so many different sounds together. I think there are some elements of the album that are a little bland. Uh, personally, I love Flume's new mixtape. I think that new mixtape is great. Uh, however, I, I don't really foresee him continuing to go in that direction. I think he'll continue to drop uh, more commercial works where maybe he's uh, fusing more EDM and more wonky and more, I guess, experimental styles of electronic music and trying to bring them to a more commercial sphere, which is not entirely a bad thing. On paper, it sounds like something that's worth doing. The Booty Tape by Ugly God. The 2010s were a decade dominated by meme culture and in a genre where the meme music is less than great, Ugly God comes through with an absolute masterpiece, 10 out of 10 meme album with elite songwriting and production. The cuts are timeless and hard. The Booty Tape is not really that good. There are like a lot of throwaway boring songs on it and it's not even that memey of a tape like for what you're building it up here to be like it's it could be funnier i mean there are a lot of parts on the record i don't even think ugly god is tr is trying to be all that funny um yeah, and I don't like this one at all i mean look i love humorous music and i love music that successfully tries to employ meme characteristics in its writing or production. And there were certainly some great examples of that this decade. I just don't see the booty tape as being one of them. Father John Misty's Pure Comedy, because it's simple and timeless production choices and decade-defining lyrics that deal with a lot of modern society's major issues. Again, going back to some of the points I made in my last edition of this album of the decade Let's Argue series, uh, I, I think it's uh, important to, and, and a worthwhile pursuit, when choosing an album of the decade, to think of a record whose sound or messaging uh, or story, narrative, is reflective of the time that it comes from and uh, represents uh, that, that time that it comes from uh, in a way that is uh, genuine, profound, 
thought-provoking. And while I don't agree with every single song and idea on Pure Comedy, while not every track is, is my favorite off the record, it was my album of the year, the, the year that it dropped, though, uh, I still think it, it's, it does kind of check all those boxes. A very worthy album of the decade contender, in my opinion. While Crazy Frog Presents, Crazy Hits, which featured groundbreaking tracks like Axel F and Dirty Frog, came out in 05, but it's still my album of the decade for this decade because it transcends the idea of time itself. Yeah, I guess it transcends a lot of things. Um, time, enjoyability, uh, authenticity, just really anything that you would normally look for in an album that you enjoy. Crazy Frog just totally subverts it and uh, finds ways to make you enjoy it anyway, even though it shares none of those characteristics of a typically enjoyable album. It's uh, one of the most genius records of uh, not even this decade or the last decade, but really of the past 2,000 years. I mean, I wish that I could go back in time and um, just, just really erase Christianity and, and just get people to worship Crazy Frog instead, the world would be such a better place. The Seer, years later and it is still frighteningly good, no other album this decade comes close to being as raw, uncompromising, and cathartic as that album. Yeah, of the three records that I loved that Swans put out this decade, The Seer is certainly uh, the most I guess dark, but I do personally prefer To Be Kind. I think the production on that one is a bit heavier. I think the record is a bit more explosive. I find the overall experience of the album to be more gratifying, uh, though, again, I would never poo-poo the seer, never write off the seer. It's a great record. It's fantastic. If you're a hardcore Swans fan and their brand of experimental or post-rock is your favorite thing in the world and you're gonna pick a Swans album as your album of the decade, uh, Glowing Man, To Be Kind, Seer, you can't really go wrong. To me it has to be Girl with Basket of Fruit, unique sound, cohesive themes of abuse, rape, and violence toward women without sounding too trigger happy for no reason, emotional vocal performances, detailed production, and very watertight. Perfect album and one of the best shoo shoo. I do agree, it's one of the best shoo shoo. And um, I fail to imagine or think of uh, many other records that I find to be as harrowing or as disturbing an experience as Girl with Basket of Fruit. Uh, in another way, uh, certainly A Crow looked at me as that. Uh, in another way, I certainly think that uh, Scott Walker's Bish Bosh is that. Um, but there is, there is definitely something eye-widening and dark and um, so incomparably unsettling about that Shoo Shoo record. Um, that I just respect the fuck out of it and will continue to respect the fuck out of it uh, from now until the day I die. Plastic Beach. Plastic Beach takes you through a glimmering adventure filled with love, loneliness, melancholy, and triumph. It gives me chills almost every time. So many incredible tracks packed with emotions in the form of music. Yes, also some really strong environmental themes throughout the record as well. Good features. Uh, some of my favorite Gorilla songs of all time, uh, Some Kind of Nature with Lou Reed, I think is uh, simultaneously one of my favorite Gorilla songs and one of my favorite Lou Reed songs. So uh, yeah, it's, it's an incredible record. I would say it's even grown on me uh, more since my year-end list that year. So yeah, Gorillas, hell yeah. And I think we're going to leave it at that. That has been the latest episode of Let's Argue, this album of the decade series. Feel free to throw out more albums of the decade in your opinion down in the comments below. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, album of the decade, forever.